We're looking at uh, Ryan TJ. What's uh, thumbnails and overall scene quality? Andrew's in the house. Oh, Andrew, what's up, man? How you doing? We're looking at portfolios. I have a long list of portfolios. Usually I do uh, eight portfolios in two hours. Um, yeah. And we do them every three to four weeks, give or take. Uptime. It's getting... We've, it's getting there. <laughs> so Ryan, this is looking pretty cool. Thumbnail wise, right off the bat, this uh, design here with the, the bar, it's kind of cool. I kind of like that. It also, if you, by, by doing this, if you make it high enough, you can actually have a normal sized image in your thumbnail. But I like the I like the text I like the bar so thumbnail wise this one's this one's pretty good I think actually I think actually what we're gonna do so let's let's look at these scenes really fast that is a broken link what did our station just crash oh. He removed it <laughs> just now. Are you in chat? Try again. Is it you, Tuxedo? <laughs> there it is. <laughs> it is. I didn't know that was you. Dude, no, no one has their same names. I don't know what's happening. What is happening? Is it say? No, it's not. <laughs> Sneaky boy. So this one, uh, I would say straight up isn't interesting enough. Like it needs, it needs some more things happening on it, like barnacles and just storytelling. Like, is it, has it been underwater for ages? Like go crazy on the, those details. El removo from a portfolio. <laughs> So just adding some other elements in here to just make it really, really interesting. Fill the inside with water. Have fish swimming around inside of there. I don't know. It could be cool. This scene looks looks pretty good. There's a lot of uh, damage going on. It's very, very damaged. And overall, the lighting is quite um, even. Some things, just some quick notes. You have a lot of busy information. Everything's very evenly lit. The way this connects to the ceiling needs like a little cap thing. Um, this close up is too close, like where, where it's clipping here. It's so close that I can tell geometry wise, this is higher res than the, than the teapot to the side. So pulling the camera back and making sure that you have a consistency as far as uh, level of detail to your geometry would be really important. Uh, let's keep going down here. I would see how stairs are, are set up in like a, in housing and understand like when the sides expose, what the sides usually look like. Cause this feels very weird to me. It's not too strange, but it feels off. Like maybe, I don't know, maybe the reference would tell me otherwise. The normal on here makes this whole thing look like it's made out of uh, cork. So keep keep that in mind, like what, what the surface is telling you with the way the light reads across the surface of it. Um, so if this is your AO, you need to watch out for things causing AO like this stuff down here. I'm not sure why that is dark because you can see like, yeah, is it dynamic or baked lighting? Cause you, you, you definitely want to watch out for like, do, like, you know why the scene's so noisy? This is, this is going to be crazy. This is all dynamic. I would assume 
It's a decal causing that. Okay, so the decal probably doesn't need ambient occlusion in it. But you can see all these little guys. See how they're dark? Because they're dark in their ambient occlusion, in their AO, when they're in shadow, not in direct light, like the light coming through a window, like this is direct lighting. When they're not in light direct, they will, um, they will be darker because they'll be displaying what they look like with the ambient occlusion on top of them. This is the main component as to why your ground looks so noisy is these little pieces are all darker because they're showing their ambient occlusion. Does that make, does that make sense? It's just, it's the way AO works in, in PBR engines currently. Um, direct sunlight shows, it removes all ambient occlusion. That's why when you have like terrain outside, if it's direct sunlight on terrain and there's no grass to break it up or anything, it's just the terrain material, it looks really flat and you can only rely on the normal map. And then when it goes into shadow, then you can only rely on the, uh, the ambient occlusion and the albedo. So it's like you're only seeing the albedo when it's in direct sunlight. So it gets it's, if you get the AO off of these guys, these little pieces, immediately your scene's going to be way less noisy, like right off the bat. Be careful about the little haloing effect that you get here on the on the edges of your alpha. Probably just need to bring the alpha in a little bit more or add some some padding or bleed of the uh, albedo in, in the texture. But you see how like the ceiling is is pretty bright here. But then it, it gets dark up here because this is where like less light bounce is going to happen. So when you when you scroll up here, it's kind of happening, but your ceiling is 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 pretty bright. Let me see if. Where is that reference? You're getting close. See your frame is really thin here. You can see the frame here. So making sure your walls feel thick enough is really important. Let me see if we can zoom in on this. You went for a design change on the ceiling. I guess you didn't see how, how much like, or how it's connected. And then adding elements like these horns on the wall would have really like helped break up that surface. Um, Yeah, a lot of it, I think a lot of it comes down to just the, the complexity of detail that's on the floor. And like making sure that the, the trim that's on the bottom half of this wall is represented. It doesn't look like, so there's like an edge here and an edge here. And you don't, you don't seem to have those edges. <laughs> I like that pig. But yeah, really pay attention to like what you're, you did a pretty good job matching the, just making sure that your values are close and light is, is playing off the surfaces really well. Like, see this, this is pretty, uh, like you're not seeing anything in this picture. If you can keep it like that here and even placing a light just to fake this highlight here and this highlight is really going to like push that. This is very bright as well for some reason. I'm not sure what's causing it. But yeah, the focus is in where these where the light is coming in from the windows and then wherever it wherever that light bleeds is kind of doing it's doing the work. Of course it's a concept, so Yeah, you're talking about um Mm.
ignore the uh, clipping, but like kind of like that where you have the little lip. And then this would all be, uh, yep. Hmm. Hmm. All right. Let's uh, get back to it here. Just quickly go through these. This scene, this scene's really busy and the scale is kind of confusing. Your camera shots tend to be very, very close. See, the terrain's quite flat here. You could really, like, make it more interesting by, like, bringing the terrain up in the back, maybe. Just going to go through these really fast because I want to make sure we get some time to look at the... Oh, man, this one's cool. So this shot I don't think is needed because all it's doing is kind of showing the the how the foliage is... is is made. I don't think this shot's needed either. Man, honestly, I don't think this one either. I think... I think just having this image... Let me see what's in this. Am I... Wait. It starts more muted. I wouldn't, uh, if you're just doing a still shot like this, I wouldn't do anything and just kind of slowly pull the camera back. I think you only need these two images. I mean, it's cool there's a fountain inside, but maybe you could have a light that you have close by to hit it so you can just get the, the highlight on the edge to show the fountain. And you're good to go. And then you show these and maybe this breakdown. This is cool to show. But yeah, I don't think you need half of these images. That's awesome. You got a community spotlight. Oh, I like this roof. Man, they have this a lot in Sweden. I love that stuff. Well, these details are pretty cool. This, uh, the saturation of this seems like it might be a little too high for PBR. I could be wrong though. Ooh. Quixel created using Quixel Mega Scans and my own props. That's cool. Tiling on the redwood is quite noticeable. Are you talking about this stuff? I don't know if that's tiling so much more than like information that is happening along the, yeah. I don't see a duplicate of the information, but I do see the pattern, right? I don't know if you want to do a shot like this unless you made this piece. Oh, well, that's cool. Yeah, decals. Add a decal somewhere just to throw Lucas off. <laughs> this door is super strange that there's just a door here. Oh, wow. A histogram comparison with a squint test. That's cool. Yeah, your scene's much cooler. Uh, like temperature wise. Let's let me see here. Okay. I'm just going to keep clicking through these. I want to see this one. Dang. That's a scene. There's a lot of stuff going on here. Again, I think there's a lot of shots that, like this one's kind of interesting, but I, I don't know what I'm looking at or like the camera angle. This one's also very, again, it's very close. So you're clipping here and you got to watch out for these tangents. Oh, 
Like the shadow behind this guy is quite dark, the shadowed side of this. For this to be this dark, but then the background to be that bright is very strange feeling. <laughs> All right, the exercise I wanted to do was take this. I do this sometimes on the streams uh, on portfolio reviews. So we're just going to take this and we're going to replace your thumbnails. Talk about the stuff I would I would think about. Mm. I'm like trying to remember how I do this. <laughs> I'm doing this way wrong. Hang on. There we go. Oh no. It's like kind of accurate, not really. Okay. So first of all, let's take this one. So you really want to focus on that statue, it looks like. And you've got it as your background as well. So I think if you were to take this, and then I usually would sit here and just kind of, uh, so if you turn this one on, paste on top, and then um, create a clipping mask. You can lock this one, and then you can just take this layer and move it around. Ugh. Down here. You can move this around and try and get like something so let's try scaling this down. And then the other thing I want to do is just kind of float around and see if there's any other things that, that look pretty interesting. I think it is that statue, but it's, it's figuring out like how much to show of it. That might be stronger than this one. Um, let's let's do the next one. If you have, <laughs> if this is yours, I think this is a scan. Um, Cause this one, this is quite strong. Like I, I would click on that, right? Let's see if I can, uh, what are we looking at as well? So it's, it's that house. Maybe we, oh, did I just screw the, there you go. Yeah, this one's hard to frame. The other thing is if you're not sure about, uh, you don't want to lose, you want to accept it, but you don't want to lose the, the resolution, you can right click and convert to a smart object. So that no matter what, when you scale this stuff down, um, even though it's scaled down, you can see, you can see how it got lower res it's only matching the resolution of its scale. Like if you bring it back up, it'll up res again. So you won't lose your, your info or information. 
Night Droppy. So that's that's super nice, right? Uh, the other nice thing about doing that, I'm still searching here. Man, this is a tough one. Because the shot itself is quite strong. I like having the little boat in there. The other thing that's really interesting is when you start using filters on it, like say we do a Gaussian blur, you can see how I'm blurring it, right? Because it's a smart object, it treats it as a smart filter. Uh, let me move this here. Or let me turn my camera off, actually. So it's a smart filter, so it's never fully committed, and you can go back and adjust it later. Like, how dope is that? That is dope. A lot of smart things in Photoshop right now. <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> and you can even turn it off. You're like, oh, I don't, I don't want it to be blurred. Did you know that, Martin? I think you knew that, no? Because look, that means you can scale this up. See, when you go to edit it, all of the filters turn off. But then after you've scaled it up and finished it up again, it reapplies the filter. Really useful. Always use dupe layers. I think this this news information. I don't think this affects your portfolio all that much. Like it's cool that it was shown in the in the. In what is it called? In the community spotlight. But you could just put that inside of here in, in this one. Let's let's keep on keeping on. This this shot I think is is fine. I'm just gonna try it. Let's see what let's see what happens. Usually with thumbnails like this. It's like finding ways to um, to smart object and then create clipping mask. There's a hot key for that clipping mask thing too. I always forget. But usually um, you want to just show part of it. Again, this image seems really washed. Why is that? See that also the levels is is treated as even though I did control L, it's treated as a filter. So you can go back and change it later if you want. Make people want to click on that. Make people want to see more. He's not he's not wrong, Leo. <laughs> Leo's not wrong. This scene is actually let me see here. I think this one might be weaker than this one because it's like perspective wise it's really difficult to understand what are, what you're looking at um like how low the ground is this tree feels like it's in the ground i don't understand how close it is to me or how far back it is which is a really crowded scene um but i would probably I'm just going to scale this and Yeah, this is a this is a tough one. See, I'm almost using the entire frame just to I didn't make it a smart object either, but it's okay. Hmm.
<laughs> so this is kind of funny and sad at the same time. By not seeing this, you get a stronger image. So, like, I feel like maybe the brightness of this or the way that it's, it kind of makes you go, okay, well, what is, like, what's happening here? This, just the shape of this and how bright the inside of that is really throws me off. Like, I'm not sure. Like that, it's still, it's clipping very strangely. This shot, I think, is okay. That one might. Mm, let's see. See, these close-ups are always very close with yours, it feels like. I do like seeing the stairs in there. <laughs> That's a tough one, too. It's almost the same. That's funny. Yeah, if you know the concept, you're going to want to click it for sure. And then for the final one, the final one, um, man, I would really go crazy with the materials on here, especially with the displacement. Now you can go nuts. Let's just paste this here real quick. This one's more about hinting. I think. Just search. I don't know. These thumbnails kind of feel like they're all over the place a little bit to me. But you really, you want to make your materials pop and the shots to just want you to click on it. Some of them are working, some of them are not. They seem, yeah, they all have like a, like the first one has a focal point that's very far to the left, which is the little character. So that becomes quite difficult. This one I'm really happy with. This one's pretty good. This one already, like even with the leveling, kind of makes the materials look more interesting. I don't think you need this one. This one's hard to frame. And this one, I think you should remove this one. And I don't know if this, this should be added inside of here. But uh, yeah, hopefully, hopefully that was helpful. I'm not, I'm still not sure if that was helpful. <laughs> It is important to think, see how I'm thinking about what you frame in your thumbnails and how you want to think about uh, approaching thumbnails. But uh, yeah. Thanks, Leo. <laughs> Thanks, Leo. But uh, let's let's see here. All right, one more portfolio. Uh, did I, did you have any more questions for me, Tuxedo, before I, before I move on?
Pre-drag. Dude, we've been streaming for a while, man. It's 3 hours, 18 minutes now. Do you think this is junior acceptable? I think if they see this, they will um they will they will take a pass on you. So removing this one, do something with this or remove it. Um this one's pretty strong and this one is is really nice. Uh but there there's a lot of extra images that like don't need to be there like draw you're drawing attention to the assets when you should be looking at the scene right like this is a scene the assets are in the scene and it's all about this this building i would really look at your levels like i was doing earlier and make sure you're you're kind of sitting in a nice a nice range and then Watch out for really dark shadows. Try and get that ambient lighting up. But um, yeah, I think you're you're on track to it. I don't think I don't think it's ready yet, but I think you're close. Really, bronze? <laughs> All right. All right, let's uh, let's get on to the last portfolio over here, and then maybe I'll sleep. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen to me. <laughs> 